Hi, it's Lee Newbecker, and I have Debbie Reynolds back on the show. Uh, Debbie, thanks for being on remotely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so um, I asked you to come on so that we could talk a little bit about some of the recent looting that has happened in Chicago and other areas across the country and what could be happening as it relates to cell phone forensics and how law enforcement can be using that to get to the bottom of how these um, coordinated attacks are being planned and who might be involved. Most of what I know about this is basically what you told me. So uh, why don't you just sort of share what your experience has been so far and, you know, in the current environment, and then we can talk from there. Sure. Uh, well, r right now I know that um, some of the looters that were apprehended had cell phones on them. Um, we don't know exactly how that information is being used by law enforcement, but technically an example of things that could happen w w could include uh, doing forensics on the cell phone, identifying Snapchat handles they had communicated with, uh, looking at text messages, looking for Twitter accounts and postings, and potentially, you know, what, what I saw happening uh, during the, the last week, at least in one instance, there was a post made to Twitter by a user that said, um, um, made a reference to doing a gig at Urban Outfitters on the West Side. And roughly a few hours after that post went out on Twitter, uh, referencing Urban Outfitters, uh, Nikes, liquor, and other things, around four hours after that looting that went on at that store. So that handle that posted and anyone else that reacted to that post uh, could certainly have been alerted to the potential for you know mass looting in a coordinated way via social media. Yeah, I think it's, um, even though the police do have capabilities to do that type of tracking and tracing, you know, they do like heat maps of certain things. The problem is that these incidents, if they are coordinated, they happen pretty quickly. So it's sort of hard for them to to kind of preempt it. Uh, but as you said, you know, always they have capabilities, right, to do um, anything with like cell phones that they capture. But they also have capabilities to do things like geofencing about who was in the area at certain times. So a lot of what they're doing is not necessarily preemptive or pre-crime. It's more of, uh, you know, if something is happening or has happened, they can go back and try to, you know, backtrack or trace or, uh, you know, if there are people on the scene, they can, uh, you know, apprehend whoever is, is there that's doing whatever and then sort of build it out from there, right? Yeah, but, you know, just the other day, uh, someone was captured uh, and apprehended, and they got caught because they were posting their their raid um, via social media, um, and they had a live view of them going in to, to bomb, you know, they, they were threatening to bomb the, the place and loot it, and taking cash registers, and the, the stuff was, uh, this is someone that was not from Chicago, and, I think from downstate somewhere that came in and came in with a goal to create problems and had a past history of that. But the person had the audacity to post it to Facebook and the FBI just busted them and they're indicted now. So I don't know why people share such things on social media uh, because yeah, they do track and trace that. But you know, a lot of the things, especially as I saw, it seemed like a lot of stores that have things like mobile phones, Mm -hmm. um, have been uh, attacked. And as you know, those things are pretty easy to trace back. So I don't yeah, know how yeah, far yeah. people like get. App, Apple had LoJack on all their phones at the retail store. And so uh, people who took those phones likely, um, those phones likely got located. But oh, yeah, definitely. I don't know that that's happening at the, the cheap cell phone stores, the burner phones. <laughs> well, yeah, those are, no. I mean, uh, they probably, you know, if anything, obviously, they may have serial numbers and stuff like that. But once you, you know, whether it's broken or people change SIMs or whatever, it's harder to track that stuff down. But yeah, the Apple phones, yes, they wouldn't have very much problem. I think, as I heard, I read that what Apple had done is for all the phones that were stolen from them, they were able to lock those down. Um, and then, you know, it had a screen on there so that you actually couldn't use it. So 
that's what I heard was happening with Apple. Yeah, well, and they also have the ability to beacon out and send GPS locations. So oh, people who are buying stolen a- a- Apple phones might find uh, someone knocking on their door from law enforcement. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea to buy one off the street at this point. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, any thoughts on on your concerns if um, the privacy issues that might relate to mass surveillance on people and tracking social media posts and actually getting in and subpoenaing phone numbers that were text to help try to prevent looting from happening? Uh, well, okay. So I guess, I guess that's, um, that's a couple of different things rolled up into one. So obviously I'm concerned with mass surveillance, especially if, if it is capturing information not accurately or targeting people who may not have even been involved. Uh, so for example, a, a cell phone can't tell, like let's say for instance, you're standing at a corner and I'm at the stoplight. It, it says we're next to each other, but we're not together. So a cell phone tracking can't really tell that. So having people who aren't involved, who are innocent, who are, especially in this regard, peacefully protesting, having them be adjacent to other people doesn't mean that they were involved. So uh, it needs a little bit more information. Let's just say, though, for, for instance, that they found that there was a string of businesses hit, the, the Foot Locker, then uh, Benny's Liquor, uh, a CVS, and a Walgreens. If yeah. there are there a group of 20 people that all pinged off the same cell phone towers at the same times and were close proximity to that and a few of the people were ID'd, would that be enough to justify surveillance on people where there were you know, four cell phone towers in common across a range that put them all in the vicinity of where looting took place? I'm not sure if it would justify surveillance, so to speak, but I think that if there is, they have other evidence, uh, uh, you know, it may help them target those people more closely, but in terms of like sweeping people up in surveillance exercises, I don't think that's going to happen unless they have an, an additional information. So let's say they had information like, just like you said, like, okay, these people were in the vicinity and then they posted a picture on Facebook with some, you know, new gear that they got, you know, that would be enough, I think, to, to justify surveillance. But just the fact that someone's in the vicinity, that's probably not enough to go on, I don't think. I appreciate your, your opinions and thoughts on this. It's a difficult time right now and hopefully we'll have stability and we'll have people held accountable on all fronts. Uh, not just the looters. Yep, I agree. Yeah, thanks, Debbie. Mm-hmm. You're welcome.